Are you stuck choosing between the 8GB and the 16GB version of the M1 MacBook Pro, the M1 MacBook Air, or the M1 Mac Mini? It's not an easy choice unless you watch this video. Welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews and thank you as always for subscribing if you have. If you haven't, just click the button and you'll never miss a single episode. Very quick shout out to the sponsors of this video, NordPass. NordPass is this awesome password manager which does a few things. It makes signing up to websites mega easy. It makes remembering your passwords needless because it does it for you. And also it remembers your credit card details. It does all of this stuff very securely. It syncs across your devices. It's just, honestly, the amount of time password managers save you during the day is incredible. And this is a great one. It comes backed with NordPass's brilliant security behind the scenes, all that good stuff. And what's more, they are offering a 50% discount if you head over to nordpass.com forward slash Mark Ellis, or just use the code Mark Ellis at checkout. The price difference between an M1 Mac with eight gigabytes and 16 gigabytes of RAM is $200, 200 pounds. It's enough to make this a decision that you really need to think about. And if you've been watching this channel, you'll know that I've been putting out lots of videos about the M1 Macs. And consistently, the most common question in the comments is, should I go for eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM? And I know why people are confused because Apple don't make it obvious on their website which one is right for you. They don't say, if you are this type of user, go with this, or if you are this type of user, go with that. I think the biggest worry people have is getting the eight gigabyte version, even though most of the reviews say it's so superb and fantastic and works brilliantly, and then having buyer's remorse, say two, three, four year, years later down the line. Now, straight off the bat, I think if you are tempted by that eight gigabyte and you don't want to spend that extra $200 or pounds, then I would go for it. Don't worry, unless you are a really heavy user, if you do loads of video edits and loads of coding and all that sort of stuff, or you're you know, the sort of person who likes to run lots of benchmarks all the time, nothing wrong with that, by the way, then you'd need the 16 gig, ideally. But if you're a general computer user, or even if you just dabble in video edits and, and, that, and that kind of stuff, the eight gigabyte version will work really well for you. There is something to bear in mind, which I'll get to at the end of this video, but straight off the bat, if you are on a low budget, the eight gigabyte M1 Mac is a brilliant computer. Trust me, you will not regret buying it. But that does lead the question, you know, who's the 16 gigabyte for? Is it for you? Let's get into it. Now, if you've reached this video, you've probably seen other videos, you've probably read other blogs about the whole RAM debate with the M1 Max, and there's lots of different opinions on this. And the RAM debate over the years has been interesting, although it's been fairly consistent in that you should always buy as much RAM as you can afford. What Apple has done with the M1 chip is kind of confused that slightly because they've made this chip which contains everything. So you have everything on that chip, including the RAM. Normally the RAM would be separate. And because Apple is producing both the software and the hardware, the result of this is that you get a machine that just works very well because they can tune it perfectly for that chip. And as a result of that, you don't need as much RAM as you used to need. Now, I've got no interest in benchmarks personally. I, I look at them. It gives you a bit of a guidance in terms of how powerful a computer is, but it doesn't tell you anything about how they perform day to day. Now, there have been tests done. Um, Max Tech, for example, he did a pretty, pretty good deep dive, actually, into the differences between the 8 gig and the 16 gigabyte version of the M1. And the only time he found that there was a big big gap between the two in terms of performance was when he was exporting an 8K video to 4K, I think. He was doing benchmarks for things like development and Lightroom and that kind of stuff. And the 16 gig version always performed slightly better than the 8 gig, but only slightly. And to me, because that's a benchmark, that means in real world usage, you probably won't notice much of a difference. And a case in point, I edit photos on both my 8 gigabyte M1 MacBook Air and my 16 gigabyte M1 Mac Mini. I use Lightroom Classic actually, which I don't think is M1 optimized at the moment. It works brilliantly on both machines. I can't tell the difference. And that Max Tech test reveals that you really do have to push it to notice a big difference. You know, how many people are gonna be editing 8K video on an M1 Mac? There was another test done on 9 to 5 Mac where Stephen Hall used an 8 gigabyte M1 MacBook Air and he used it in his words, to the absolute limits of his normal workload. And he basically just kept opening tabs in Safari, left loads of videos running, and he couldn't notice a single sign of sluggishness on that eight gigabyte machine. In fact, the only way he could get it to slow down was by having 12 apps open, 24 Safari tabs, and then six Safari windows, all of which were playing YouTube videos at 2K resolution. 
Now that's not normal everyday usage. Who does that? His tests there, for example, reveal that with eight gig, you can have lots of tabs open and not worry about it. So once again, this to me suggests that eight gigabytes of RAM is perfectly adequate for the vast majority of people. Just to give you some examples of how I use my eight gigabyte M1 MacBook Air, it is now a writing device primarily for, for me. So I use a, a tool called Ulysses for this, which is like a writing app. And it's the first device I pick up in the morning is that M1 MacBook Air. And I sit there, I do some writing, I do some emails. I might reply to a few Teams messages that have come on overnight. And it just never, ever feels slow in any way. And I'm at the point now with these M1 machines where I just leave apps open, I don't think about it. So for example, on that Air, I might have Lightroom left open, for example. There are a number of apps I use that are traditionally memory intensive that I leave open on that eight gig Air and have no issues with. I use Safari, I don't use Chrome. I, I dip into Chrome occasionally, but Safari is my main browser. I do occasionally leave lots of tabs open and again, it never feels slow. It's snappy, snappy, no problem at all. So for me, the eight gigabyte Air doesn't feel constrained at all. Now this is going to be leaving you with the, that lingering question, who is this 16 gigabyte version for? Now I think if you just want extra headroom, you want peace of mind, get the 16 gig version. It's $200, 200 pounds. So it's, it, you know, it's, that's a lot of money still, but if you've got, if you can stretch to that, if it's just within your budget and you don't need to worry too much about spending that additional money, just get the 16 gigabyte version. It does mean you've got a bit of extra headroom. A lot of people are, have asked me if having eight gigabytes will make these machines less valuable for a resale. I don't think they will. They're all comparatively good at holding their value, but having 16 gig, if you just, if you're that sort of person that wants that peace of mind, I know what that's like. Just get it. That way there'll be no buyer's regret, no buyer's remorse. Now I am a case in point with this, for example. So I bought the M1 Mac Mini and I spec'd it up to 16 gig. And the reason I did that was because I had intentions for it to become my main daily driver. And it is. And I just wanted that headroom. I knew that I was gonna be editing a lot of videos on it. And even though the eight gigabyte M1 Air worked well for that. I didn't want to ever run into a point where I'm having to wait for things to happen. Because for me, getting stuff done, getting things rendered, exported quickly is really important for my business. And that's another thing. If, if it's a business purchase, spend the extra 200. Trust me, if your business, unless you're in re real dire straits with your business, if this is a, a computer that you're going to be relying on to make money and to, to grow the business and to make your customers happy, then just spend the extra. I think if you're a student or a, perhaps a hobbyist or whatever you do isn't particularly tied to making money or running a business, then the eight gigabyte version works really well. What I'd do in that case, if you're worried about performance, is actually opt for the computer with the fan. And that means you wouldn't get the Air because the Air doesn't have a fan built in. Instead, you'd go for either the MacBook Pro or the Mac Mini because they have, they have the exact same processor as the M1 MacBook Air, but it has a fan attached to it. And that means that basically those computers won't slow down the CPU when you start to push them. And actually performance wise, that will have much more headroom for you than 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now this week at the time of filming, there have been some reports that M1 Mac Minis, MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs have been experiencing higher levels of SSD drive wear than normal. And to put this in really simple terms that I can understand, this relates to the fact that M1 Macs are apparently chewing up their SSDs faster than normal. And the reason that's happening apparently is because they are writing to the disk more than they need to, which might be a software bug, some people are suggesting. But it's also potentially because those people who opt for eight gigabytes, the Mac is having to use the SSD to act as additional memory, basically. And in doing that, it's having to do lots and lots of file swapping backwards and forwards. Now there is a caveat here, which is the fact that the people who have experienced this have experienced about 3% drive wear in, I think a couple of months or something. But when you look at how much they're using that drive, it's astronomical. Their tests revealed that they'd done about 150 terabytes of transferring of files between, you know, to that drive. I ran the same test on mine. Maximum, I think my Mac Mini has done about 10 terabytes or something, and it's at 100% health. No, no issues indicated whatsoever. So clearly these people who have found this hard drive wear are absolutely nailing these machines. Like, I don't know what they're doing. They might be really, again, they might be doing 8K video editing. They might be doing lots of really intense co coding and, you know, rendering and what, what, I don't know what they're doing. They're just really hammering these Macs. Now that might be just their daily use for it. And if it is, 
that illustrates that these M1 Macs do have a ceiling in terms of performance, because these guys clearly need a Mac Pro or a just a, a more powerful machine. But that isn't my use case, it's probably not your use case either. And whether or not this is true, whether or not these SSDs in the M1s are less resilient or whatever it might be, if it is a software bug, for example, again, I don't think normal, you and I, everyday users, are going to be taking these back in less than 12 months or even in three years with a broken SSD. I'll keep an eye on mine. I'm gonna keep doing tests on mine just to see how it gets on. But as I say, having used the, the M1 Mac Mini since January and the M1 MacBook Air since December, they both show full drive health. I've, I use them every day, no issues whatsoever. So if you're starting to read those reports about SSDs breaking down, I wouldn't let that put you off getting the eight gigabyte version. I wouldn't let it put you off getting an M1 Mac at all, they're fantastic machines. I'll keep an eye on it, I'll update in the future, but just in case you've seen that, don't panic. So in summary, I would get an eight gigabyte M1 Mac if you are not a very intensive user, you know, you're not a, you're not gonna be editing 8K video or doing really heavy development tasks, etc. If you're a normal computer user like you and I, then the eight gigabyte version, if that is your top budget, get it. You will not regret it, trust me, and it will last you a long time. If you're a business, spend more, get the 16 gig. That $200, 200 pounds, you'll get that back. You know, the, the return on investment will come back very quickly. Trust me, it has for me with the Mac Mini in almost immediately. And it just gives you that peace of mind. And again, if you're a hobbyist and you've got that extra $200 to spend, go for it. It will give you that knowledge that you've got the you know the, the the maximum amount of ram that you can get at the moment from an m1 machine but please don't sweat it if you've got just enough money for the 8 gig get it you'll love it now if you're still curious about how 8 gigabytes of ram could work for you keep watching for a link to my m1 macbook air review i'll also put links to my buying guides for all of the m1 machines in the video description so please go and check those out but in the meantime as always thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next video